Hey guys, welcome to like a brand new video. Sorry, I am going to adjust the mic. This might be a bit loud. It's impossible to adjust. There, was that like super loud? I don't know. Touching the mic usually is like incredibly loud because, you know, why I can barely hear it. So sorry if that like broke anyone's ears. Anyways, guys, welcome to something new, something not super new. Welcome back to Pokemon Neon Glow. So today I'm actually going to be showing you a little bit of how to use the program RPG Maker with the Pokemon Essentials Kit. I don't know exactly what it's called. I guess it's kind of like a game that you edit. It's like a resource pack and stuff. So anyways, first off, you can see a lot more on my desktop and that's because this takes up like almost the entire size of a desktop, like the screen where you're editing on. So today, I'm not going to go too in-depth because I'm still learning this stuff, but I'm probably going to show you a little bit of how to do maps and how to edit some things like that. So, enjoy. And, yeah. So here's the game, or what you can see of the game right now, I guess. So there's like, this is the intro, I know. The black screen here where my mouse is, that is what you'll see in the game. So this is the screen. But in the game, you actually, well, it's not what you'll see, but this is what the screen will be. So you, okay. That's a bit big. Just let me cut for a second. So guys, here it is in, like, bigger screen mode. Now you can see the entire map. This is the outside of the beginning town, which, as you can see right here, I have renamed to Granite Town. So, anyways, when you step outside of any buildings, oh, so we're going to Granite Town. So, pretty much the whole game right now, almost, I've added a couple things, but it's pretty much the default that comes with it. I took away the rest of the world, so it had the entire region made. All I kept was the start off town with these three houses, like Daisy's house. I don't know who Daisy is exactly, but I'm assuming it, it will just be a random NPC. Maybe she'll have some significant PN or backslash PN that scans for players name so whatever name you put in the character if you have backslash PN it will automatically um, alter it to your name so if you name yourself like I don't know Bob all you need to do is put in the like and you want someone to say hi Bob hi and then your whatever name you chose but you can't assure everyone will pick the same name, so you just do slash pn, and it will automatically say whatever's in the name file. So it's pretty cool. But anyways, the game that it comes with is a bit OP. Like, for example, if you talk to your mom, she will give you, it's either your mom or this person, but she will actually give you six random Pokemon and running shoes and all this stuff right away. And these can teleport you anywhere, stuff like that. It's just a bit OP, especially for the start of the game. So I'm going to delete all of this. Um, I don't know what just happened. I'm just going to keep click X because that was weird. But yeah, so everything's a bit like super overpowered. Like this guy gives you tons of, he'll give you the entire national decks for Jogo and Kanto, stuff like that. <laughs> and there's just extra NPCs just so that everyone can give you stuff. Like, it's crazy. But anyways, I'm going to show you a little bit of how to add stuff to the basic map this episode. And a little bit of, like, how to edit dialogue and stuff like that. And also, by the way, I cannot see when the cuts are going to be coming. Because... This takes up so much of the screen, the little panel is off screen. I need to use a keybind to show it. I think it's Control Shift F12, and that will stop the recording. But it automatically stops after 10 minutes, so I might not be prepared. And it might cut without me knowing it. Just warning in advance, even though that happens all the time, anyways. So, anyways, guys, what I'm going to do with this map, and you can scroll down here and see a little bottom of it and whatnot. Like, I'm just going to add, like, a little bit of decoration or whatever. So, up here, you can see these, these are the three layers. So, layer one, you want to put, like, your ground inside of basic things. 
like that. Layer two is what you put on top of the ground. If you put layer two things and you don't have a layer one under it, there'll just be a white square around it most of the time, which is really annoying. And layer three can go on top of layer two if there's anything you need to add a bit more. And this right here is for events, which is why I'm usually on. So like, if you click on you can see his events. This is the door explainer. I don't know. Camp comes with it. And he tells you how to do a proper door transfer in the game. So it has a bit of a tutorial in the default. I'll probably change what he says. But, like, for example, I could change him this text right here by clicking edit. Right click it and press edit. And it will say, these doors are example are examples of good solid door events. So you can delete that and change the dialogue to whatever you want. And the backslash B, I'm pretty sure that's what decides the color of the text. And I'm pretty sure B means blue in this. I'm not sure what the letters for most other colors are. I think if you leave it blank, it becomes black, stuff like that. So let's just change it to, hi, welcome to Granite Town. So you're going to press OK. And make sure before you X out to press apply. If you make the NPC like it doesn't come with it and it's just brand new, you don't need to click apply. But if you're altering something, you always need to click apply. And then OK. And now he'll say, hi, welcome to Granite Town when you talk to him in game. So I'm not going to show that, I don't think. Not today. I'll show you in a later tutorial because... I have actually changed the character sprite already for the main playable character. And I just don't want to reveal the sprite by playing the game yet. I want to show that next episode where I'll show how to change the character sprite and stuff like that. But anyway, so let's add something. So here, over to this side here where my mouse is, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different tiles that you can pick from. So for example, this would place a flower. So in order to place a block, you need to go into the layer that you want it to appear on. So layer one, two, blah, 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 whatever. All three of them. Or NPC, or event, to make an event. So what do I want to do? I want to put two flowers right here. So I'm going to go like this. And if you right-click the flower, it will automatically select that flower tile right here. Now I can left click and just place them there. So two flowers right there. And I'm not sure, but I think they might animate to kind of move in the wind or whatever. I'll put two there too. But anyways, a weird glitch I have noticed, by the way, just far I might want to throw this out near the beginning. If I delete something, it won't recognize that it is gone. And it would still think it's there. So if I were to delete this mailbox, it would still think there's a mailbox there. I wouldn't be able to walk through the, these two squares. I'm not sure why that happens exactly. It's a little bit confusing. So I'm going to try to avoid placing blocks you can't walk through. Unless I'm sure I want something like that there. So I'm just going to spruce up the town a bit. Make it look a little bit better and more unique. I'm only going to add a few little things because I don't want to ha add anything big and then remove it later and then be like, dang it, because if I add something and remove it, now it will have that blank square there. But I have backup saves constantly. I'm not going to be backing up saves during the video though, but I do have backup saves for pretty much like every couple edits I make just so I can go back if I do something silly like that. So, and here we go. So you can also select the tiles straight from here, and they'll work on any layer. So I want this. I want to place a bush here. Now, if you look at that bush, it has a white background, which means if I place it on the bottom layer, and un it will have a white background. So I'll just undo that. I don't think it will place there now. So I want to go to the second layer, and now if I place it, it will have a transparent background. I can go perfectly right there, but I actually, I'm pretty sure I want it. Nope, it's good the way it was. Hopefully it doesn't place 
it doesn't skill say it's there. It doesn't matter either way because I can easily redo this properly. I have a backup save right before I started the video, so it's all good either way. And now if you click here, you can see all the layers and bush is perfectly right there. Everything looks good. So yeah. And if you want to, sorry, that's, I was trying to click it to go into your house, but let's say you wanted to delete something, like this random person here. So you just right click them, press delete. It's very simple. And you, But if you're going to do that, you have to be on events mode. So delete, delete, and delete. And events, what I found so far at least, is they don't work like blocks. So usually I have, like, usually if I were to do, like, if I delete a block, as I said before, you can't walk in that space. But if you delete an event, even if it's a person or something like that, you can still walk there. It doesn't count them the same way. I'm not going to delete mom though. She can stay because she's just a normal character, I guess. So yeah, and here. So let's explain a bit more. As you can see off to the left, right? I don't know. I think it's left. Bag of directions. Don't judge me. But as you can see right here to the left, I think. The tiles have changed, and that's because there's different sets of tiles for exterior, interior, stuff like that. So I'm going to pick something like, for example, I don't know, let's decide, um, this. I'll take a little bowl of noodles, and I'll make sure it's on the third layer, and I'll place it right next to my computer. Makes it look like I was just having a little snack while I was on my PC or something in the game, who knows? And all oh, that good stuff. Um, it just cut by the way, in case you didn't notice. I don't know. It kind of sometimes has like a 10 second delay before telling me it cut. So I don't know what you heard, but I said it's cool, decorative, all that good stuff. And you can place pretty much any of these items as long as you place them on the proper la layer. And as you can see, like, if I were to click second layer, all the things that are bold are the things on this layer. So the rug and the scares and most of the furniture is on second layer. All this stuff's on third layer. And that thing, well, Pokedex and all this stuff is on the... Sorry, what am I thinking? It's on the event layer. But I think these show up no matter what in bold. Let's just delete the Pokedex there. There's no need for it. So, yeah. And, alright, so you can place anything you want. So, for example, let's say, I just do something simple like a window on the wall. So I go into second one, and I'll just find a good window right here. And you can also do this, by the way. You can do that. So if you drag, it will select multiple things. So I could go drag and select the entire thing if I wanted. But all I need are these two tiles, which when combined make up the full window. And I click, sorry, not there, up a little. There we go. And it looks perfectly in line with the little wall thing at the bottom, which is pretty cool. It matches the wallpaper and all that stuff. So yeah, it looks lined up and nice. So, if I were to go outside to Grand Night Town, which, by the way, if you want to know how to rename things like Granite Town and Pian's House and Daisy's House, these don't really matter in the game except Granite Town. Whatever you rename this town to will show up in the top corner when you exit a building in well in this town. And you can rename that very easily by just going Map Properties, by right-clicking it and go, clicking Map Properties. And then you can just change the name to whatever you want. You could name it like, I don't even know, like, Fuhua Fu Fu Town. I don't even care. But I'm going to change it back to Granite Town because my idea for this usually cities have like a naming scheme in Pokemon, or like towns usually follow like a certain setup, like all of them are colors or something like that. So in this one, all of them are probably going to be relevant to rocks in some way. So granite is a type of, like, 
ore, mineral, rock, whatever. I don't know what one great egg is specifically. And you just need to click OK, and you can see it change back right there. This is very easy. And yeah, so you can change anything by just clicking them. As I showed before, you can click the people, you can change your dialogue, stuff like that. These have scripts in them, so like it pretty much just makes it so it sets a route so that you can't move yourself, and it will automatically wake a few frames. Pop, use an animation of the door and move you up one, like up and through the do door. So it'll look like you walk through the door instead of just appearing next to it. Stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And you can copy these, by the way, just with right click, copy, paste, and put them anywhere. So all you need is the door code that comes with, and you can put that on pretty much any door in the entire game. But what you do need to change is this right here. So if you click edit on that, this is where it decides to teleport you to. So if I click that arrow, it will show that the door leads right to where I got white screen where my mouse is. So if I were to click here, now the door will automatically teleport me here. But I want to keep it where it was, so I just click cancel so it doesn't change anything. And that'll be good. But all you need to do is change it so it goes to any map you want. You can click the maps here and decide and then click and then it will go there stuff like that and one last thing I guess before we go I'm just going to show you a little bit of how I edit the intro it's actually very easy it's just like this same type of thing I'm going to go more in depth, in depth into this next episode but you can pretty much change everything it says here so like when it says text that is when we'll be talking. So this is the professor talking. So I changed it from oak to spruce because that's going to be an area of professor in my region. Stuff like that. And you can just change whatever. And yeah, I'm going to go more into dialogue in next episodes. But let me know how you like this and everything because it's pretty cool. And pretty much, by and these, by the way, sorry, I need to show you these. These show pictures and... The pictures are just are automatically in different folders within Pokemon Essentials and RPG Maker, and it will just pull them up onto the screen. So it won't actually look like a black screen like it shows here. It will pull up the pictures as the code goes through and runs through the game. So it's all very like cool and stuff like that. It's very simple actually. So I think this is going to be the end for this episode. Like, actually, one last thing, I'm just going to go out to Granite Town, and I'm going to put a little something on the Pokemon Center, because I, well, not Pokemon Center, sorry, the lab, because I think this looks cool, and I've done it in my previous versions, but my saves were deleted the first time, so now I'm doing tons of backups and stuff like that just to avoid anything like that in the future. But I'm going to take the Pokeball here for like the last thing and just place it there. And now in game, you see the Pokeball, it looks all cool, it just sits there. And it will just stay there, it won't work as an item that you can pick up or whatever. It's just a little decoration above the door, I think it looks cool. And yeah. And so guys, that's all I'm going to show you for this video. I'm actually just creating it. So as I create it, I'll probably create videos just of me making it like as I make it. So there will probably be like lots of videos around now because this is why I'm starting making it. It'll be really fun. I'm just going to post as many videos as I can make. And since it's exam time, I get like most of the day off school. I only need to go to school for two hours. That so gives me lots of time to work on it. Lots of time to record. So let me know how you like this episode. I really want to hear it. And um, tell me things you want to figure it out. I don't know everything actually. Like, yet. Yeah, I'm still learning it. But if you want to hear another good tutorial, um, go check out Atomic Reactor. I'm pretty sure is his name. It's a YouTube channel. He does tutorials like me. He was making a game. I don't know if he's still making it or what. It was called Pokemon Obsidian. It sounds really cool. 
And he has actually a really good tutorial of showing how to do everything. So if you want to check that out, you can. But if you want to know anything from me, just tell me in the comments what you want to learn. And I'll try and post a video of it and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's all for today. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and stay awesome. Um, yeah. So until next time, stay awesome. Bye-bye. I said stay awesome twice. Rest in peace, outro.